Hey everybody, Jed with Jed Demlo Productions coming to you with part two on my five part tutorial series on Thank God for That, a new single from Steel Ivory out of Nashville, Tennessee. This one will be on the bass, some of the techniques on how we did it, and the mix. Let's dive right in. Okay, hey everybody, part two of my five part tutorial on behind the scenes on how we did this stuff on Thank God for that. So today it's going to be bass, and uh, let's just go ahead and get right in here. Uh, if we look at what I did here, I have a bass DI, and then I made a copy of it, and we'll talk about that in a second. So if we just look at the DI itself, this bass track was recorded by Jeff Smith here in Nashville, by the way. Um, so great bass player, great guy. Uh, I've got console one running on this. Okay, so I like to use console one. It's the SSL 4000E emulation. It, it sounds fantastic. So you can see what I did here. I just did a bump. Like you can see where the meat of the bass is. But I did a bump right at 100. Um, and uh, you can see that, uh, you know, it's not huge. But it's uh, it's a big, it's about three. 3 dB of gain. Everything else I just left alone. Let me turn that up a little bit so you can hear it. So real nice fat bass tone to start with. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and um, turn the console out. So here's the bass DI by itself. Now I'll go ahead and put the console EQ back in. You can hear it get fatter right away. Let's go back here to the intro. Uh, now, when you get a bass track from somebody, or if you played it yourself, um, you can see where I did do some editing in here, and you want to make sure that uh, if you have any sections, you know where uh, you have done editing. You want to make sure that you go in and make sure that there's no clicks in between these. So go in and use your, you know, your uh, on the edge here. You can trim this back so that uh, so that there's no clicks in between. And uh, it looks like I didn't really have to do a lot of that with this, but uh, it's something that you want to check. Now, the, the next thing that I did, I wanted to control it to make sure that, you know, the dynamics were nice and consistent. So I used this UAD Manly Very Mu. And I'll tell you, if you have UAD, if you have a Apollo Twin or whatever you might have, if you have UAD plugins um, and you happen to have this, or if you don't have it, you might want to take a look at getting it. Um, the Very Mu here is fantastic on bass. And I'll show you, I love this preset by Mark Needham, um, and uh, it's just, you just click on bass, and it opens it right up and gives you a great starting point. I'm going to have to undo that so I can get back to where I was, um, but it just gives you a great place to start, um, and it will give you just a touch of compression on it, you know, not a ton, but this works really great on electric bass. Um, it just, I've used it so many times, it just always seems to give me, get me right there, you know, in the ballpark. And then you want to, you know, set your threshold and your compression and, and output and all that stuff uh, to, to taste, you know, the attack and all that. So, so that it's feeling just right for the tempo and the feel of your tune. Um, but if we, we'll take a listen to the difference. Let's just go to a chorus. Listen to how it just makes it so clean and, and it's natural sounding but it's very even now I'll take it out I'll put it back in just super controlled on that so that's the bass DI okay now let's look at the bass copy so basically what I did in studio one you can just go to the track that you want to copy come up to copy and hit duplicate complete and it will give you a complete copy of whatever this track is that you're that you're you know selecting including the effects and all that stuff 
So uh, here's my copy. It's it uh, it's got the console on it. Uh, I didn't need to have this stuff on it and duplicate it again, so I took that off of this copy when I made it. I put the console on, and let's take a look. I didn't use any additional EQ, didn't need it, but I did add the little radiator um, to this. So let's take a listen. I'll turn it up so we can hear it. I'll turn it out. Okay, now it sounds... It sounds really distorted. So I'm put it in. Okay, now it's out. So it's got this heat knob. You can turn up the amount of the distortion that you want dialed into your track. And I've got a good amount in there. And I left the mix wide open. Now what I did was I just mixed this in to the original bass DI track. Let's bring it all the way down. I got both channel solo let's just bring the one with the little radiator on it you hear that a little more now you can really hear it let's take it out hear how small it got it's not nearly as wide listen to the difference it's huge so uh, making a copy of the DI of your bass track Putting a little bit of uh, distortion or a preamp or whatever kind of, um, you know, thing that you can put on it to rough it up a little bit. Okay, so if you don't have the little radiator or something like that, um, what you can do if you have Studio One is you can come over to your effects and you can drag the guitar pedal board right onto the track, open up a slot, grab the rat pedal, crank that distortion. I mean, it's really got a ton. Let's leave it. Let's leave it about like that. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this down. Let's, let's bring it back in. Slowly. It does something similar. It fattens it up, it dirties it up a little bit. It makes it bigger. So you can use a distortion pedal as well. As a matter of fact, if it was a rock track um, or a metal track, the, that would actually probably sound really cool. So the little radiator just works great for me. Let me show you the difference one more time. It's out. It's in. Take it out. In. Now let's listen in the track and see what the difference is. just makes a huge difference having that copy of your di bass track and then putting something like the little radiator or some kind of saturation plug in on your copy and then just fade that in just bring the fader up until you can hear it until you can hear it get as wide as you want it to be and then you're done okay so that's going to be about it on the bass track today if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below Remember, I'm Jed Demlo from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer here in Nashville. So if you have any need for uh, vocal production or any kind of country music production, hit me up, DM me. Let me know what you got going on. And I'll be talking to you again real soon. Thank God for that. Be